this psychological concept underpins everything in reality, everything in your life. Understanding it gives you an advantage. Not understanding it gives you a disadvantage. That concept is duality. If you look at the universe, you can see it at the physical level. You see physics, gravity, you see the balancing of things like the earth orbiting the sun. A little bit that way, a little bit this way, and there's no life on earth and there's not me, there's not you, there's not this camera, there's not 10,000 years of civilization. And that's a balance of opposing forces. Now this concept, as all first principle-based concepts that are the foundation of everything, is found everywhere. These principles, these foundational truths, you can find everywhere. There are many of these examples that you can understand and use in your life. This is one of those ones that is multiple levels up the chain of understanding. It's a little bit advanced. To really understand it and use it to your advantage, you have to accept a lot of hard truths, a lot of things you don't really want to accept. So duality is basically that there are two sides to every coin or everything, and they are exactly connected. This side defines this side. Without left, there's no such thing as right. Without north, south doesn't exist. Without positive, what's negative? Like everything. Without negative, there's no positive. It literally can't exist. And without positive, negative can't exist. So you basically have negative and positive. You have the dualistic nature of things that define each other, or you have literally nothing. You have, I guess, the heat death of the universe. So these things are all connected. They define each other. And the way I think about duality in my life, which I'll get into, is as it relates to hard things and struggles. Because even though duality is found in the solar system and I assume quantum mechanics and gravity and things like this, all these opposing forces, these forces that actually define each other, like hot, cold, etc. Well, it's also found in a human life, your personal human life. Now, humans are really good at being reductionist and making everything black or white. It's just the way we're wired. We want a neat little box to fit all of our understanding into. If somebody or something is safe, it goes in the safe category. If we're not sure about it, it goes in the unsafe category. This is just evolutionary hardwiring applied to everything, the modern world specifically, because that's how we've lived and survived for hundreds of thousands of years. And without these quick heuristics, this quick good, bad, safe, unsafe, either ors, we wouldn't be here today. But in the modern environment, Everything is not so clear cut. In fact, most things end up somewhere in the gray. You understand this side, you understand that side. It's very few humans, even if you consider the worst human ever, which most people would say is Hitler, almost nobody is universally good or universally bad. They are a mix. And maybe on that spectrum of good to bad, you know, Hitler's pretty much the definition of bad. A lot of people would agree to that. But did he do good things? <laughs> I'm fuzzy on what good things Hitler might have done, but I think I remember hearing people talk about like some of the things he did do that were good. I, you know, I don't know. Again, this dualistic concept is that everything's defined, everything's connected, and there's a spectrum of everything. That's what I'm trying to elucidate here. Okay. You want to make somebody bad, enemy, evil, whatever, you know, they're greedy, they're rich, they're this, they're that, they're Hitler or they're Gandhi. In fact, you know a lot about Gandhi. Actually, take every famous person from Mother Teresa to Gandhi to Martin Luther King, every person that you think is like, on the far good end of the spectrum, and then read their biographies, see how flawed they were or are. And every person that you think is supremely terrible or evil, maybe go look at the good things they did. And the exercise here is to help you think better, to not think so binary or black or white, and to understand that they all define each other in your personal life. And this is the core idea here that you can use. Duality as it relates to your life and using duality to your advantage. Think about it this way. Every struggle that you have and have had, and you're going to have them if you haven't, this is just a truth of existence. Every struggle in your life is going to define the opposite in your life. So every hard thing that you've ever had to endure and will endure is what gives meaning to all the abundance and the good things and family awards and good things you do and helping people, all those feel good feelings, all those good times, all that abundance that you're going to have, because you will have that as well. I mean, of course, if you choose to, you can also choose not to, and you can live in victimhood your whole life and be miserable, but that's choice. But all of the good things in your life are defined by your hard thing. And this is the idea I always come back to when I hear people complain about the rich, as if the rich stole their wealth or whatever. I mean, there might be some in corrupt countries that have done that, but generally the rich, most of them are self-made and they earned their money by giving value to other people in a marketplace. That's all it is. You're giving people what they want. They pay you. You have some profit left over. You do it millions of times and then you become wealthy. But the idea that people that are born into wealth or that are wealthy have it so easy 
Well, how do we know that? Because let's say you're born into wealth. Why do so many kids born into wealth never do great things with their life? Yet so many of the people that do do great things and change the world, most of them are born into poverty or middle class, or they at least struggle in some way, and they're not born with a silver spoon in their mouth. There's a correlation there. I mean, the data is so obvious, actually. And then you actually look, let's say, at suicide rates or addiction rates or even just general happiness rates of those that are born into very affluent households or just America, which is the most affluent country on the planet, yet we're also the most depressed and sickest. Again, you can see this. It's not so clear cut. It's not so black and white. Why? Because duality. When you don't have to struggle, let's say for financial things, and it's not just financial or economic or whether you build a company or change the world, like I get that. But all of the great entrepreneurs that built something great, most of them struggled. And that's why they went to the far other end of the spectrum because the duality is connected to that struggle. The great things that they do, a lot of times they're trying to run away from or they're so petrified of going back to where they came from. And that fuel you can't create unless you've lived it. Oprah lived in her car, abused. Paul Mitchell lived in his car, was homeless. Now, I don't know the example of Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk. A lot of people think Elon Musk was born into wealth, and that might be true, but, I mean, he started his companies with no help and was like $100,000 in student debt. Of course, he's an outlier. Bezos, outlier as well. I don't really know if he had a really strong struggle or anything like that. He's just more one of those freaks of nature. Right place, right time. Internet boom. Creates a trillion dollar company. But there's duality there, I'm sure, because I think Amazon had make money for 20 years. But he had a long-term vision. So again, freak outlier for sure. But you see way more than not, you see people that come from nothing or struggle are those that have the ultra success. And those that are born into abundance don't. And then you get into things like meaning. Struggle gives you meaning. Because to rise out of struggle, that is a pursuit. You have goals. You wake up and you want to improve your situation. And somebody that's born into wealth that doesn't have to do anything, talk about a existential meaning crisis. What are you supposed to do with your life? You don't have to work. You're like, do you party all the time? That gets old. I guess maybe you can have a family and have meaning through that. I mean, the amount of people, and you can see this all throughout America. Like we have all these things we want and need and things we don't need actually. And we still struggle with meaning. We still aren't happy. So we go and look at devices and try to get more dopamine hits, et cetera. So duality explains all of this. And back to your life. Whatever you struggle with is going to define all the things you do in your life. It's going to define who you are. It's going to define all those times when, let's say, life is good or you're making a bunch of money or you no longer have a health scare or a health crisis or whatever. And I can count off many examples in my life. Back pain, my newborn daughter going to the hospital, being there for a week with mastoiditis, which could have gone into her brain. Being grateful for that. Not having health insurance, but you know, whatever, we'll see. Maybe I'll pay that bill, maybe I won't. Traumatic breakups, losing my father, losing my grandparents, getting sued, stolen from, cops trying to shut down a production facility here in Austin, Texas, because food permit people were crazy psychos and out to get me, like so on and so forth. And yet every day I struggle with making sure I'm not working too much, spending most, more time with the kids. Like I'm embracing 80-20. The reality is that 20% of the things I do generate 80% of my results. So, so maybe I should be okay with taking some more time off, whatever. Not feeling guilty if I'm not at home working so on and so forth. But all these things that I've gone through have defined me, have made me hungry. They give me an anchor to which I know I'm trying to work to prevent or mitigate in the future. And they give me a strong reason why for life, for appreciating time in the moment and building something out of this life rather than just squandering it. All of these things are the reason I am who I am. And I'm, I'm happy with who I am. I'm excited about the future as well, but it's all connected. That's duality. I also have to plan for the future where there's gonna be hard things and there's gonna be abundance and there's gonna be these dips, ups and downs. And I could have all this abundance in one area of my life and I could be struggling in another area of my life. That is life and that is duality. And I don't really know how you embrace it other than understand it and do the best you can because we're all gonna struggle with it. It's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be hard. You're gonna deal with shit. But the more you deal with shit, the better you get. And the more you deal with the down, the more you can appreciate the up. That's the core idea here. That's why we have to truly embrace the hard times and the hard things. And we have to connect that to the other side and realize that when we overcome these hard things, when we learn from them, when we grow, when we adapt, we actually get more out the other end. It actually defines all the good things in our life. Because your life, if you plot it on a time chart and you rank bad times and good times, are exactly connected. Your life is your life. Nobody else will live it. All those bad things in your life are exactly connected to the good things. It's like positive and negative night and day. Without the good or the bad, 
you can't define the other. If you have no good or bad, you're just a blob of nothing with no real desires or aspirations. You don't have to do anything. You might as well just die. Lay there on the ground until you waste away. Hard things, easy things, desires, pursuits. These things are what give meaning to life. So I know I'm not going to give you a lot of tangible examples here. What to do with this, it's one of these deep, esoteric, little fuzzy ideas that the more you cognizant of it and think about it, you'll start seeing it in life. And then when the hard times come around, maybe they're a little bit shorter. Maybe you're better equipped to deal with them. Maybe you even embrace them. And you're like, oh, well, where can I learn here? Where can I get better? This is just practice. This is practice for life.